How's it going everyone? This video is going to take you through how we installed this beautiful lakeside patio using a very popular well-known brand Teco Block. The pavers are called Blue 60 and they're used all over the country. Teco Block is known for their very nice looking color tones and excellent quality pavers. A lot of people lay these three-piece paver designs following a pattern, but I don't. I lay randomly and I watch out for a few things here and there, which I explain in this video. If you want to know how we screeded for this patio, it was the video before this one. You gotta check the playlist link in the description below. So let's just get right into the day, guys. I hope you enjoy it. Beautiful day. You know, it's actually better that we're here and it's not like the middle of summer because it's way better. Well, it's kind of still like middle of summer, but mid middle of 70s. All right, so we are going to be setting up our guideline for laying pavers. This is just in my way right now, and I'm gonna put it in somebody else's way. So we're gonna be putting a spike down there, a spike down here to hold the string line, and it's gonna be on the inside of our border pavers. And it's gonna be the guideline for laying our main pavers. We're gonna have our main pavers and then we're gonna have this paver right here, which is Old Vienna, made by Nico Lock. And it's a color tone called Raven. And then we have Teco Block's Villaggio paver with a shale gray color tone. And it's gonna match with our main paver blue 60 from taco block um shale gray color tone also just walk right into the water trap is it going it's going yeah oh. so we don't want it that close because it's probably going to be some play that looks pretty good you know what I should do? Just bring my pressure washer tomorrow. Clean up the concrete. It's a good move, huh? Yeah. Before we do poly on Thursday. We're gonna have to go all the way to the end trap or else we won't get a true gauge of where it is because it's kind of like the walls bowed a little bit. That's no good. I'm gonna have to maybe send it in an angle. down to where it touches. That'll work. I still got that knot. Shown it in a couple videos. Not everyone's seen it. This is the slip knot that I use when I hook up a string. Loose side on your left side. You go under the right string. And then you go under both strings, up and over both strings and through that loop. Makes like a D with this string going back through. And then you got it right there. You pull it against the slip knot and you wrap it around the stake and it's nice and tight. And if you wanna take it off, you pull this loose end and it pulls all the, the tension off of it. And you can go hook it to a stake again afterwards. Eight inches on the money. I'm not going to hit the wall on this one. It's nice. That'll work though. The new lines aren't as, I mean the new stakes aren't as good as the old ones, Trav. The rust helps hold the string better. That's a little bit closer to height. A touch higher than that. Just shy of eight. We're gonna go copy the other side. Eight, exactly. Let's see what it looks like as we go. See, that's the variance. The wall is not perfectly straight, but that's eight and three eighths. Eight and a half, a little less. Whoa, nine and a quarter. Eight and a half, eight. That's so wild. Both sides are the strongest for sure. So there's a little bit of a bow in the middle, which is fine. That variance, we can fill in with polymeric sand. That's the edge of our main pavers. Now we gotta find a square line going that way, Trav. 
Oh! Would you believe the pencil is right there where I need it to be? Is it really? Look at it. Oh my god. Alright, so we're getting the mark of the edge of the house because that's where we want to go with the patio. That side is going past the house, so it doesn't really matter. That's why we're starting over here as well so we can have a perfect edge with no cuts. So we're just going to follow that down. Make a mark right there. And then what we're going to end up doing is that 8 inches for the border. So we're going to bring it in at eight, 8 inches and then set up a spike over here. But we got to do a couple things to get that ready. I'm going to bring some pavers down. I'm wondering if I think that bucket's in my way. I might put it over there. situation it's always best to go downhill backwards with a pallet of pavers but I'm gonna see how it feels with the border pavers because that's not as heavy if I go down there backwards I gotta turn around I don't really want to do that so we're gonna see how this first one feels probably can't see anything on this camera doesn't feel bad at all. Let's put you on top of the machine. All right, Teco block, blue 60. Blue 60 means the thickness, it's 60 millimeters um, height. They have a blue 80, which is a driveway paver. It's thicker and stronger, obviously. Slate is the texture of the paver. It means it's not smooth. It's got a, a natural like um, texture on it. And then shale gray is the color tone. So 117 square feet on a pallet. 11 rows or tiers sometimes it's called 3148 pounds if you're wondering how much it just went down the hill face first and that's a pretty steep hill huh trav uh, yeah. very steep handled it nicely we're gonna leave that pallet right there that's the inner border pavers made by nico lock old vienna raven just kind of small thin pavers with a really deep black color. Very nice accent row in any kind of paper project. This is the tape measure. I can do it. Mm. Watch that string too. Oh, I see it. Is it on a string, you say? <laughs> is it on a string carrying 
bathers right into the water? That would not be fun. <laughs> All right, so we've got to square up with the edge of the house. So we're going to be coming in eight inches from this mark right here, which is going to put us right there. So I'm going to have him hold the string there, and I'm going to bring it down that way so we can square it up with that line over there. I'm gonna need you to hold the string over here, Trav. Huh? What? So these cables are pretty big. That's scaring me. <laughs> That's scaring me. You don't remember these ones? I do. But it's scaring me. <laughs> that makes sense. You're gonna end up being over there. Um, you gotta cut that string, I guess. Where the heck did I put my knife now? Gave uh -oh. it to you. That's what I did with it. Start overloading your brain sometimes. You can't do things right. I'm gonna pull from you. Do you see that red line? Yep. You gotta hold it right there. I'm gonna put it where I think we might need to be, or close at least. Close enough to use the square. Yeah, you're right. You're thinking right. So, all right, we'll see. We'll see. God, you gotta put it right up against it and I'm gonna be putting some pressure on it. Note the red line on the, um, inside there do you see on the stone pillar oh, right here? yep because we're that's going to count for the border you got it yep. i don't know trav i think i was a lot more correct than you thought <laughs> ah, i got gotcha. you yeah one second i gotta move it over just a little bit trav good This is sitting tight on the paver. We got just a slight gap so that you can tell that it's good. Let's see where we're at here. Wow, that one hit good, Trav. That's perfect. I'm wondering if what we do is we just use the screed for now, you know? Almost went in the water. I'm just running the water, Trav. Telling you. Okay, so we know that's pretty close. We're gonna double check again. Got it? Wow, that looks really good. Now, the screed's only just the secondary guideline. The more important guideline is this one. But that gives us a good, good reference point. Now that I got that there, I was using the lip of the square, so I'll just shift it down a little. And we want to make sure that it's on this line really, really good. Looks good. We're ready to lay some pavers, Trav. Tough part's going to be getting them over here at the beginning, that's all. Guy um, commented on one of the videos where we did the triangle patio. That blue 60, they have a pattern in that thing with no four ways. And it uses every layer by layer. And I checked it out and it looks pretty legit. But I don't have the time to pay attention to that right now. <laughs> I know how quick I can lay the way that I lay. I don't know how quick I can lay that pa pattern. We'll have, to, we'll have to try it on some other job, I guess.
So on a big patio like this, that's four pavers. The maximum joint line you want is like five. Five's about the maximum. This one right here is like four and a half. So we're gonna break that one and that one once we get to it. So that one's broken up, now we're going to break that one up somehow. Hey bud, you get my meat stick? Nice. Trav caught me on camera saying, I want my hot meat stick. So I got to show him what it is. Jack Lynx, wild sticks, hot. <laughs> They're really good. So I'm here at Techo Block website. We got Blue 60 Slate pulled up. Slate means textured. They also have these same pavers, but smooth. They don't have any texture, and it's definitely a different look. But Blue 60 Slate is what we're using, and I wanted to show you a few of the things that we look out for when it comes to laying the pavers. We're gonna take this example right here. We have a lot of four-way intersections, and what that means is it's when four corners of pavers meet up and touch each other. And where my mouse is right here, that's one. You got four pavers that touch each other there. Got one right there. There's a few other ones right here. Here's one. And the other thing we want to look out for is the long joint lines like I had just mentioned in the previous clip there. So this is blue 60 slate, but champlain gray instead of shale gray. And it's got a charcoal border. And these pavers are actually blue 60 as well, but they're the small paver in the bunch. And they sell them separately in this charcoal color or shale gray or brown, whatever you want. And this is a really nice look. I've used this before. Um, you might've seen like a triangle patio I built. That was a video I put on my channel a little while ago, and that was pretty much this exact layout. The Blue 60 Slate Champlain with the charcoal edges, and it looks, it looks really good. I like that. But in this application right here, if we look, we have a four-way intersection right here. And what we also have in this is incorporated is they sell a Grande separate. This big paver you see here is something that's separate from what you would get in the Blue 60 bundle on the palette. But you can order these separately and incorporate them in your design with Blue 60, which is pretty cool. But if you look to the right of that, we got the big four-way intersection right there. Kind of a long joint line for the space here. Five pavers is what it is. Yeah, five, five pavers, but if you look, I mean, it's not a very wide area. So that would be considered a long joint line in this area. And to the left of it is something that you don't really want to do either, which is stack a bunch of the same size pavers on top of each other, like they did here. They put three small ones in a row. Just kind of put them in a situation where they needed to put a four-way. And this one right here is the best picture I found on their website. There's not one four-way intersection in this entire area. You can pause and look. I've looked for a while. The person that installed this, this right here, did an excellent job. No four-way intersections. The longest joint line is one, two, three, four, and two small ones. So that's five pavers. And in a big patio, that's like the max you want to use. And he broke it up at a perfect spot. So once you've recognized they do that well, they lay, they lay the pattern out nicely. Then you look at things like their cuts. Like this cut right here along the border is crisp. And the same thing around the cuts on the fire pit. Crisp cuts. It looks really good. Cuts around the pillar. Really nice. And you can tell the wall block is all perfectly level. Fire pit's installed perfect. This is a great install. And again, when you're looking at those specific things, those the way they lay their pavers, you can tell the difference between someone who has a lot of experience and high standards as compared to somebody who doesn't. 
So like I said, you get the smooth pavers as well. They are definitely a little bit more slippery than the texture, but it's a little bit easier for patio furniture to sit nice and level on. So there's a lot of things to consider. And this is the Blue 80, like I had mentioned before about um, it's for like driveways and everything. And I'll show you some of these pictures. So here's a good close up. This is the Blue 80, but it's still the same thing. It's, the only thing difference is the thickness. But we got a lot of four ways here. Four way, four way. And you know, to, like I said, a lot of people, it might not bother them, but the more you look at things like that when you start picking apart patios, the more things like that stand out. Like this paper right here, this large rectangle, has a four way on that corner, that corner, and that corner. That's wild. This is Blue 60, laid in kind of a unique way. They have it running in a linear pattern with all charcoal, and then they break it up into a random pattern. But even within this one, you know, like I said, if it's something that bothers you, like me, I don't know, maybe I'm just too picky, but like you got four way, four way, four way right there, another four way. These projects still look mint, don't get me wrong, I'm not knocking these guys at all. I mean, very cool looking, very, very cool looking. These are just small details. This one right here I love. So they use the blue 80, the small piece out of the, the three piece design, and they made a herringbone pattern out of it. And this driveway looks mint, looks mint, I love that. This one right here I came across probably has the most four ways in anything I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> but they're everywhere. You got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's a lot right there. And then this is the driveway. Same thing, but from the bottom. And we got one, two, three, four, five, six, but anyway, yeah, there's just, there's a lot of them. And again, the big mistake, like, on something like this is stacking the same sizes on each other. Like this rectangle, rectangle, rectangle. Got a really long line of small rectangles. Another three large rectangles on top of each other. Those are things you want to look out for. I mean, to avoid four ways and everything, sometimes you got to put, you know, a handful of squares together. And unfortunately, that's just the way it is. They usually give you more square pieces than the rectangles. So you got to fit them in there. So on my patios, you may see some spots with a handful of squares next to each other. But one thing you will never see is four ways. Unless it's snuck by me, which is very, very rare. But that's, a, that's probably the most important thing to me is no four ways. But still, again, not knocking these guys. This driveway looks awesome. Customers probably pumped about it. That's a cool design, but you need to have a big area. Like these edges right here are the main pavers. So if you do it in a small application, it's gonna look a little funny. But when you have a big patio, that looks sweet. They, have, they put the inner border as the blue 60 charcoal, the small piece. And there's like, there's four ways on the borders, but a lot of times the border you might, that's just gonna end up happening. It's almost impossible to avoid. But I'm talking about inside the randomly laid part. You don't want four ways. And I looked at this this right here, and there isn't there isn't any four ways here. So this is a nice one right here. I like that. This is a linear pattern driveway. You see the joint lines go from one side to the other. And inside each linear row, there's a bunch of four ways. And just by looking from, like, back here, you know, again, it looks awesome. It really does. But when you start looking at those kind of things... As a hardscaper, every time you look at a project, it's the first thing you start looking for is the the way that the pavers are laid and how they executed it. That's a cool view. But see, so this is actually, if you look close here, they ran a linear pattern. This whole driveway up to right here. 
This is the last linear row, and then this is all randomly laid down on the driveway. And then if you go over here, they have it randomly laid on the left, linear on the right. So they kind of just did a lot of different um, laying patterns on that one. You know what? It worked out. Looks pretty cool. That's that same one from the driveway side now. Techo Block makes awesome product, guys, really. They just make awesome, awesome stuff. Here's the spec sheet of Blue 60. I get questions like sometimes here and there. They ask me, how do I know how many of each piece to get? And it comes pre-assorted already on the pallet. Each row has a specific amount of each size. And you have to lay it randomly yourself. Or you follow these modular patterns they have. So 116.82 square feet, 3,148 pounds for the pallet. You get 11 rows or tiers. And each tier is going to have just shy of 11 square feet per row. And then these are the sizes of the different pavers you get. You get 6.5 by 13, 13 by 13, 13 by 19 and a half. And they're all 2 and 3 eighths inch thick. Those are your four colors that you're going to see. I use shale gray the most. Champlain gray I use a lot too. I did a chestnut brown patio. There's, a, there's videos on my channel about that one. Sandalwood I have not used. So this modular pattern number two is the one I mentioned. A viewer had told me about that has no four ways in it and not long joint lines. And I looked at it and he's right. The longest joint line is four pavers and there's no four ways. But my only issue, even with something like this, there's a lot of pieces that make like one puzzle piece. But after a while, when you look at it, you're going to see that this is replicated. It's a pattern. So, although it looks very random, your eyes will eventually be able to see that this is the pattern being repeated. And that's something I just don't like to see. I like it to be completely random. Everywhere you look on the patio is different than somewhere else. To me, that's a true randomly laid paver patio. And here's the border pavers that we're using on this project. The Lagio. So you got all these colors to choose from. Onyx black, you got browns, Merlot. I've used Merlot before. Shale gray. That's that one. But it's just a nice looking like rustic cobblestone kind of look. And you can see some people have made beautiful projects just with that paver. Like that's a nice looking driveway right there. That's the same driveway and it's permeable. That's what's cool about this system is you can put it chip stone or crushed stone in the joints and make a permeable driveway and these guys installed it perfectly it's another one just looks like an old cobblestone beautiful look that's weird I don't like that that's cool Yeah, I like that. Very, very cool. Again, that's permeable. You can see it. The joints are filled not with poly sand, but with crushed stone. That one's got polymeric sand in it. Nice. That one gives you a few different patterns as well. So those are the products we're using and a little bit of information about them. I hope that helped. Hope you enjoyed going through the website with me. I know it took a little while, but let's get back into the job now.
Got to beat three. You better get down low. Don't hit the bucket and don't hit the ducks. And don't hit the boat. One, two, three, four, five. Took a right turn. Yeah. Uh, all right, so now I have to take a minute and try to beat your record. Hmm. That ain't bad. Oh, this is the one right there, Trav. You ready for this? You gonna watch me beat your record? Nope. I, oh, I can't even, I don't even know how many nice. times. That was a big boy. One, two. <laughs> Went nowhere. That was good. I think that was five or six. You'd have to get a yard of like river rock just dumped at your house if this was yours so you can just skip all day that is the remainder of two pallets at 117 square feet per pallet what is that trap 234 feet 234 square yeah. feet so once that's laid that will be how much we've done benny's got some border laid in there's a good size gap in between the wall but we're gonna figure out some kind of product we can use there probably not gonna be polymeric sand that's for sure might use a product like a easy joint it's like a semi-permeable joint sand that's good for like an inch and a half or so i think so we might be using that it's looking good dude huh so this looks really really good i'm gonna be laying these out but i'm gonna have trav get this area cleaned up once we get this laid out we'll see if we can bring down some more pavers be nice to lay out to where that three quarter is today it's getting late though it's five working late tonight boys Last week before school, get you a 40 hour week. Cause Friday I think it's gonna rain, so we gotta work hard. Trev, I got two things for you. Can you fill up that bucket with chipstone from the skid steer bucket? And then grab the blower, battery blower. That way we can have it over here just to clean off as we go. I'll be honest with you guys laying pavers is probably one of my favorite things to do in life i don't know what it is about it man when i was when i was younger and i started getting into just landscaping alone not hardscaping per se even when i did that lawn maintenance um pruning and mowing lawns stuff like that 
I was always so interested in the art of laying pavers or even stone masonry. And it really drove me into this trade. And still to this day, I mean, there's nothing that I enjoy more than a day of laying pavers like this. And on the lake especially, this job site was amazing. And I was so grateful for the opportunity. Trav, tell me, do you like the border? Yeah. I do too. Border Benny. Not bad at all. So we are gonna get set up and we're gonna put a full pallet of pavers on these pavers right here. That way it's right here and we can just pull from the pallet as we lay up to this area and then that'll bring us to the corner. We'll be able to um, put a pallet here and then one on that side as we're laying. So I think it might be smart Trav to put an empty pallet down and then put the pallet on top of that pallet, cushion the blow a little bit. So I want it kind of like right here, but like back. Three blocks. No, not three. I might not be able to reach it then, but like here, so I can still walk in front of it. stone stuck in between the rollers. Can you just videotape from the patio? Videotape putting it on? Yeah, like from the back side. work out good and we won't have to cross over what we screeded just right here perfect height Look at that I set myself up for a four way Rookie. Another beautiful morning here. Day three. Today is the 23rd, I think. Yeah, 23rd. August 23rd. Good morning. Morning. You got the blues. Mm -hmm. You matching Benny today. Yep. What's up, bud? Hey. Hey. Nice to see you. <laughs> nice to see you on camera. It looks like it's like two teams against each other today. I can't wait till like five years from now. Every year I'm buying a different color. I don't care. Every year. So we're just gonna. Red, orange, white, brown. Yeah. And I'm gonna start having the sleeves embroidered with the year. That'd be cool, huh? Yep. Imagine if I started getting that serious. Yours said Travis and the year on it. Everybody got that that fancy? What do you think? I'm into it. Then you might be a professional. <laughs> well, that was a good reaction, guys. Maybe I won't do it. You just get basic shirts from now. I'm going to buy you all white tees. Right. Just says HH with like, it looks like a Sharpie, but it's actually screen printed. Just HH. Dude, are you getting this ready for GeoGrid and stuff? I was, so it would be camped. Proud of you, dude. I didn't even have to tell you that. 
just make sure the geo grid goes up over the uh, the ledge here, so it locks it in. Trav, day three, mm -hmm. two long days. What time did you get home last night? What time was it? it was 8:20. Yeah, it dropped you off at 8:20. We worked late, but look at what we got done. Two days, huh? This ain't no joke here, Richie. This ain't no joke. We're gonna have to cut this whole ledge because it's not square with the house. The house and this wall are literally in a foot and a half difference in square. So when you run into a situation like that, you're forced to have to either square yourself off the house or off of the wall. What we're gonna end up doing is sending a line straight with those steps and we're gonna cut it right at the front of those steps. And we're gonna have the border run into the edges of each side of the steps. But the most important thing in our build, in our perspective, was that when you're on the patio, it's square with the wall, so it looks right. It's square with the dock. And when you're looking out at the water, the joint lines are pointing at the water. If we were to square off with the house, the joint lines would be pointing like in that direction. So it wouldn't be square with the dock, which in my mind, I think that's a little bit, it's a little weird. And then when you come off the boat and you're coming up to the patio, the joint lines are right square with you, like right at you. So it's the lesser of two evils to just square off with the wall, cut up against the house. So when it comes to laying in the border, we always set these pavers about a quarter of an inch or maybe even slightly more 
higher than the main pavers, and then we hammer them down into place flush with the main pavers. The most common point of failure in any paver project are the edges or the border. And one of the reasons is because people don't excavate or prep the base far enough past the edge of the pavers. We like to always go a minimum of eight inches past the pavers. And that's gonna help support the edge because the part that's most prone to sinking is the edge of the backfill stone right where it meets the soil. So that being eight inches further than your pavers is gonna help you a lot. The edges of a patio are also the least compacted part of the patio. So again, that's why we lift these pavers up and put more stone under them to account for that sinking, the extra sinking the edge is gonna do than the main pavers. It's just a fail safe and an additional insurance policy in my mind. I see so many paver patios fail around the edges and it's because people don't take the extra time that is necessary to install a border properly. But I didn't spend too much time videotaping the border install. I have plenty of videos on my channel that explain it. How we put the border in, how we make cuts on curved borders, and also how we put concrete as our edge restraint. So if you check the links in the description below, there'll be videos on how we do all that if you want to learn more. So the final two things we have to do with this patio are secure the edges that are revealed with concrete and we have to polymeric sand the joints. But that's going to all be in the next video. I hope you like this one. If you're a regular viewer of the channel, let me know what you think. If you're a new viewer that's been searching um, some education on pavers, uh, I hope this video was helpful. If so, let me know in the comments below. But hit that like and subscribe button if you want to see more content like this. And you guys already know the deal. Until the next video, God bless. Peace. <laughs>